So this is Josh in Wales, and uh, Josh, thanks so much for sending these along. This is this amazing build. I'm just so inspired by this, and I think it's so cool. And this is uh, in a in a lovely little cottage, and as you can see. Um, this is a staircase that Josh is replacing with a rocket mass heater. So I'm going to speed through the first half of these because we've seen, well, I won't go too fast because they're so interesting, but we've seen the first half of these already here on chat um, a few weeks back. So uh, here are the stairs still, and he's getting ready to tear those out. And then as you can see, they're gone and they have no way to get upstairs. Um, and there's a temporary ladder set up, but we now got a nice workspace here that we can work in. And just kind of moving forward with the demo, getting down to the bottom of the floor, pouring a new pad. Very cool. And as you can see, uh, he's got some temporary stairs set up. And here we are. We're getting ready to start. So this is just so cool. So here we are laying out the pedestal of the bell and there is a stand for the core inside this is such a cool build it really is yeah belgian culture i love this so we got a brand new pour on the floor we got this lovely bottom of the bell going together um and it's all starting to take shape and again we've seen a lot of these so i'm going to kind of speed through but now he's got a poured slab here uh, to hold the core really nice work just a really great attention to detail and what you see here this big space on the left of the image we talked about this the other day but it's going to be a, a, a he's going to brick over that um, but it's a service entrance and i think that's really really smart is a great is a place that you make it easy to extract some bricks and get yourself into the stove if you know that there's otherwise no other easy way to get in there. So really, really smart plan here. Just going to brick this over with non-interlocked bricks and leave service access for later. So now the fire bricks are coming in to form this batch box. Oh, my mouse showed up. <laughs> so weird how that would, I I can't figure this thing out. I'm I'm not the best computer guy sometimes, guys, but uh I appreciate the feedback. Um Hey Cletus, nice to see ya. So yeah, so if my mouse showed up, then you can see this is the service entrance here, and this will be bricked over. And now we've got our core going in. You can see he's got an expansion joint going here, some ceramic wool laid between these bricks, and I think what we're gonna see is oh I see that was actually just being laid up around the core those were just laid there so they could then be pulled up to allow the core to be insulated and to have an expansion joint to keep it floating from the red bricks so the slab down there Cletus I'm gonna say is just regular concrete you'll never get that much heat in a bell system like this especially since it's going to be a tall bell, you'll never be able to push that much heat down this low. So that can just be regular concrete down there. Um, <clears throat> so here's the build continuing. You can see these clean outs kind of taking shape. And we got some insulated fire brick going into the core here. So this is a sidewinder batch box configuration. Very, very cool build. Very, very neat and tidy. Another cast refractory slab here for the top of the firebox in this case. Um, really neat work. Great attention to detail. Um, really looking at, at, at just wonderful aspects of a build here. I hope this is all helping you guys out. I find these so informative. Um, so, yeah. So you can see we got floating core fire brick core red brick body insulation where those two meet uh, because the core is going to grow and move at different rates than that red brick um, and the side loaded riser so here's the body of the stove starting to come together and as we said this there's the riser insulated fire brick for the riser really neat work just beautiful now he's got these steel uh, brick pins I can't remember what they're called brick retaining um, masonry things here and these can go into the you know be laid into the masonry here and they can be um, extended 
and lock basically lock in place this ceramic fiberboard insulation so he can hold the insulation around his core in place by using these steel standoffs embedded in the mortar in the bricks so mark the slab under the firebox should, is should be refractory because it will get exceptionally hot so that's a place where you wouldn't want to use regular concrete absolutely so like we said now this is going to be a staircase right so he's replacing his staircase with a you know rocket mass heater so here we are looking down into the heater and you can see the shape of the top of it forming the um the stair the stairway so how cool is that right there's the chimney interfacing you can see there's a chimney down low and then he's got a bypass up here with a t so Clint, this is very much like what you were asking, I think. Um, in the, the only difference is his chimney is external to the flue, but the same idea. Okay. And that is how that interfaces there. And here he's got ceramic fiberboard covering the top of the bell. <clears throat> now, one of his concerns was, you know, how to put these masonry treads on this masonry stove and keep everything firm through all the thermal cycles. So we talked about it a lot and what we came up with was to give it as much of a thermal break as we can with the ceramic fiber board and then build on top of that uh, using his masonry stair construction which we'll get to I think in just a minute here. Um, and in that way, we're hoping, and I think it's going to work, that, uh, that the, the treads will be able to essentially float as a whole unit above the body of the stove, and in that way, hopefully, last for a long, long time. Um, so again, lots of cleanouts, lots of, of, of control. Now, this is a double-skinned heater. So on the inside, we had that normal red clay brick for the lower, and then he switched to fire brick for the upper. Just good practice. Um, and he's using these concrete blocks for the outer skin. Now, we've talked about concrete being non-suitable for really hot areas, but for an outer skin here, it's just fine. It's going to give him a lot of mass, and he's using, it looks like a thin fiberglass as a batting in between those um, to provide that expansion joint. So really good um, construction techniques here. Uh, he's really using a lot of classic masonry heater um, techniques. This is definitely a higher end build than what we typically see in my single skin DIY builds. But I think it's really neat because he's using a lot of our same concepts. And this is Josh's second heater. He built a um, batch, or no, I'm sorry, a, a brick J tube to my plans a few years ago and loved it. And, and so this is just his sort of progression as a builder. And I love to see it. You can tell it's a, an advanced build. You can tell it's gorgeous. Um, and uh, it's really nice to see. So Josh, really kudos to you, man. Good work. And I think this is really cool. So he's he's really painstakingly separated this outer skin from the inner skin. That's masonry heater um, technology that that they've you know perfected over millennia. And uh, and so he's really working the details here. And you can see it's really gorgeous. So he actually has a completely separate floating inner and outer, and yet still the doorway is all interfacing in the right place, and it's sealed inside and out, and all of that. Um, so there you go. So there's another picture of that. A really, really pretty finish. And as you can see, um, it's starting to kind of form just this single big monolith. You know, we know what's going on in there. And it's a pretty complex shape. But on the outside, it starts to form just this real um, organic looking structure. I think it's so neat the way that works. Um, so... So Luke says, how did he float them apart? So the way he's floating them, Luke, is that they're actually just two separate pieces. So he had that inner skin that was brick um, and fire brick, and then the outer skin here that's that's cinder block uh, or concrete block with the bricks around the, the doorway threshold there. And then you can see these bricks are just on edge. So they don't, basically, they just don't interlock with the inner skin but they touch and where they touch I'm assuming he's got a little bit of 
uh, super wool or ceramic fiber or something there to form that expansion joint and then you could mortar it and the mortar is probably going to crack out of there over time but nonetheless um, you just basically the airspace between those two skins is essentially it's not sealed but it's pretty well plugged with the batting that he put in between there so you're really just these are not interfaced the outer skin and the inner skin where the door comes together they just mate like that so um they're just kind of and that's why i say floating apart they're they're not there's nowhere where those skins interlock brick to brick so hopefully that makes sense and answers your question um so there's his uh, secondary air tube, pre-port tube. Remember, it's a sidewinder, so it's it's shooting off to the left there. Very cool. And here we go. So he's got a um, basic render on the outside that he's put some um, texture in. And this is just in preparation for what I'm assuming is going to be a lime plaster render for the final finish. Um, and Luke says, oh, but for the rest of the build, are they touching? No, Luke, they're not touching anywhere. The skins are always, always floating. Always a small gap between the brick and concrete. Yes, you could see it back there in one of those pictures. He had, um, he had some fiberglass. Uh, you, you can just barely see it right here, but he's got sheets of, of it looks like fiberglass mat to act as a as a batting between the two it, it really just acts as ex its expansion joint that way you can kind of snuggle them together against that fiberglass not tightly just you know and they'll be floating um and will the batting stop or deter the heat transfer you know it's a great question always learning it's 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 something i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure on because if you didn't have that you'd have an airspace um <clears throat> so I've seen a lot of classic masonry heater builds and they always have that little bit of expansion joint there. Sometimes they just use like cardboard in the build and then they let it burn out um, to form that expansion joint. So, um, you know, I don't know the answer to that. I think that, I think that what it comes down to always learning is that the expansion joint serves the purpose of insulating the outside from the, movement thermal movement of the inner skin and in that way you can you know do nicer finishes and get more permanent finishes apparently um but whether that comes at the cost of a little bit slower heat transfer it might you know it might just it's just kind of the nature of the beast and that's why we talked earlier about single and double skins and heat transfer and you know all those things so you know, most of my builds are, are single skin because I like that quick heat transfer and high out, outer skin temps. Um, but, uh, but yeah, will it slow the uh, transfer, deter the heat transfer? I think it does slow it. I think it still comes into the room. Um, and I think in most instances, it's sort of, that's a designed feature. They want it to come out slowly, as it were. Um, and yeah, Luke says, I've heard some people just use a sacrificial piece of cardboard. Exactly, Luke. I've heard that many times. And uh, I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it's great. I haven't, I haven't personally found a reason for me in my builds to go to those double skins. Um, but yeah, we've talked about the ins and outs of that. So let me just speed ahead. You can see he's starting to render this thing. It's just got vertical lines in it. He's making the texture so he can get some, some uh, adhesion to his final layers. Um, but here's where I was trying to get to is it's not finished. You know, he's got the whole house to do. They're going to plaster the whole place. So it's in a, it's waiting, but physic, you know, other than just the final render on the outside, the final detail, that's pretty much done. And as you can see, it's gorgeous, isn't it? I mean, it's just, it's, I think it's so organic. It fits in the space so well. I'm really looking forward to seeing it with the final plaster rendered on it. But, uh, but what an ambitious build and what an excellent uh, execution. So, Josh, thanks for sharing that with all of us. Thanks for allowing me to share that. And uh, um, really appreciate just that, uh, that wonderful example that we can share with people because you've, you've, you've set a high bar there, my friend. So good job. Um, so the Law Doc says, I do not see the need for the fiberglass between the skins of a masonry heater. Yeah, Law Doc. So I'm not going to tell you that there is a need for it. Um, I do know that Josh here was working with someone who had a lot of experience with sort of traditional European masonry heater techniques. 
And Josh expressed to me a few times that um, he said, well, we're doing this, and I know that this is sort of outside of the realm of what you would normally do, but he's got his views from this other experience. And so <clears throat> they were definitely combining sort of some elements that uh, some that were new to me. And uh, yeah, I I agree. I don't really see a need for it, but at the same time, I don't a hundred. I didn't hear the other person's explanation for why it was there, and I don't see any downside there. Um, I think the biggest, you know, the the cardboard, for example. I think the biggest reason to have something like that there is just so you don't accidentally um, pinch that gap and have contact somewhere where you didn't know you did, and then it ends up pushing that one brick out of whack and messing up your whole. You know, you might have a two hundred thousand dollar soapstone skin on there if you're building a really fancy thing, and so that would be a disaster. So I think maybe it's just that little bit of material inside um, gives you that expansion joint, and you know that you didn't make contact. And perhaps his concept with the fiberglass is that it is inflammable. So rather than cardboard that's going to be sacrificial and burn away, they were just like the fiberglass will stay in there, and we won't have any, you know new build smoke mess <laughs> I don't know this is just a thought I, I'm I'm totally speculating but I agree with you law doc I, I I don't honestly know I don't think it's necessary for sure so but anyways a wonderful build I mean just a just an absolutely wonderful build oh I'm sorry I did have I guess a finished more finished picture look at that so there it is with the render with the landing and this door, I'm going to go back so we can see. Okay, so this was like a, a closet space here. And I didn't realize that. He must have sent me that, and I put it in the folder and, and forgot about it. Um, but there is the final rendered stove. So it is superb, isn't it, Belgian Gulch? I mean, you wouldn't know it was a stove. It's just gorgeous. So Luke asked if that's a piece of the door. I don't know, Luke. I'm not sure. It, it may be. Um, this build, keep in mind, he's not... He's using um, like a Peterberg uh, Sidewinder core plan, and he's just someone who he's built one of my stoves before. He's purchased plans before, and so we just consulted as he was getting started. You know, he bounced some ideas off me and and was kind enough to share the photos. So um, I don't know what door that is. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I don't think it's one of any of the uh, normal ones that fit any of my stoves because it looks to be a different size. But I can't tell. Anyways, it's very nice. It's lovely. What a beautiful build, isn't it? And yeah, the way it fits in to the space. So here we are looking down. So this is, if you can imagine, you're walking on top of the bell right there on those stairs. So they are, um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they are cast slabs. Um, and uh, just how cool, right? Like, what an incredible build. There's the chimney going up through the old home and another picture from the front of it interfacing into the space. So in this way, like he was really able to, oh, excuse me. He was able to build a very large masonry heater and really didn't take up any additional space in his home. So I just, I think that's just so, so wonderful. Uh, so... There we go. So that's the end of the picks, guys. So let me just get...